Good evening, my dear ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Dr. Moxmo, here to bring you yet another creepy pasta reading to ease you into your weekend after a busy and productive week of yours. Before I begin, I would like to try something new that I haven't done before and introduce tonight's reading with a little story of my own. The best stories to narrate from my perspective are the ones that I can personally relate to, and tonight's story is one I hate to admit that I live through weekly. Sleep paralysis is something I suffer from almost daily. I don't recall when it initially started. All I know is that I was very, very young. And from the first experience, I am not ashamed to say that it frightens me to my very core. There is nothing that fills me with a bigger sense of dread than waking up in the middle of the night and trying to roll over or sit up to get a glass of water to realize my body is not responding to my thoughts. I can't move. I can't feel air pumping into my lungs every time. I truly think I am about to be killed by some force I cannot see. It is only in that brief second where I think I'm about to pass out from a lack of oxygen where I feel the air return to my lungs and I sit up in total fear. I became inspired to do this story after a very recent and real experience of sleep paralysis. As usual, I awoke in the middle of the night. I tried to roll over to feel my body not responding to my thoughts. I was experiencing the oh-so-familiar trait of sleep paralysis. I tried to quell myself through it as I usually do. But something about this experience became far more unusual. I began to hear what sounded like soft footsteps walking down the carpet of the hallway next to my bedroom. It almost sounded like my brother was walking to the bathroom, as our bedrooms are parallel to each other. From past experience as a child, sleeping in my parents' bed, I knew that if something from the outside world would touch me, I would awake immediately. For once, I would think salvation would stand in the form of my brother. I tried to rock in my bed, trying to moan out any form of words, trying to catch his attention as he walked by. And to my surprise, it worked. The footsteps were now coming closer to my bedroom and to my bed. I continued to rock back and forth, hoping to convey to him the message that I was having another episode of sleep paralysis and to have him touch me to wake me up. But no matter what I did, he wouldn't lay his hand on me. The footsteps stopped right at the edge of my bed. In my mind, I was begging him to do something, but nothing came. I had no choice but to bite the bullet and live through the entire experience until I awoke on my own. The whole time, I swear to you that I felt someone standing over me, watching me. But when I was finally given control of my body once again, I shot upright to realize I was alone in my room. I even got up to check on my brother, and it dawned on me that he was over at a friend's place for a sleepover for the night. I was completely alone. I know that sleep paralysis hallucinations are common to some, but I have never personally experienced one. 
I won't discredit that possible outcome, but at the same time, the feeling was so real that I'm not foolish enough to totally discredit the idea that I wasn't alone. I hope you found some sort of enjoyment in that story. Please let me know if you would like me to share with you more of my own personal stories. But for now, I will no longer keep you waiting for the true story you were waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and relax as I recite to you the tale of Sleep. Paralysis, Hallucinations. It is called Sleep Paralysis. Many people have suffered from this condition, their hallucinations occurring whilst in REM stage of sleep. Hallucinations include all five senses making whatever dream you're having seem unquestionably realistic. There's very little you can do in this stage of sleep as you are completely paralyzed. You just have to let it pass. But that's not always as easy as it sounds. You're laying there, unable to move your head. You don't know if you've woken up or not. Completely still, your heart starts to beat faster as you hear a noise. It's like creaking, wheezy breathing. A combination you didn't even know existed. Under the breathing, you can hear a laugh. Like if someone was trying to hide a chuckle under their breath. The room is almost pitch black. The moon casting strange shadows across the walls. As you stare at the odd shapes, they begin to sway. Dancing in the moonlight. Pulsating like your dizzy head. Shiny black beetles are now in place of what were dark blurs. They're scuttling all over the walls. The sound of their little bodies hitting one another almost drowns out the wheezing. They're all over your body, crawling under your skin, rippling from the inside. You try to scream, but it's like they're blocking your airways. Terror is too mild of a word to describe how you're feeling right now. Struggling to move, you forget about the wheezing, but it doesn't last for long. The wardrobe begins to open slowly. The large, black hand with long clawed fingers wraps itself around the door as the sickening smell of blood fills your nose. You stop struggling, too petrified that if you move, then the creature will see you. But it's too late. A large black hand reaches out behind the wooden door. Antennas jaggedly curled with round, glowing yellow eyes. Head cocked and jutting out as if its neck were snapped. It would look more harmless if it weren't for its huge, cracked mouth. Seemingly stuck in a permanent smile. It looks cruel, wicked, evil. Your eyes are glued to it, your heart beating impossibly fast. It slowly approaches you with its glowing eyes fixed to yours, coldly matching your stare. You can't look away as much as you try. 
it's hypnotizing. Moving, twisted, and jittery like it has many broken bones fused to one another. The small, sharp movements just add to your fear. It's huge. It looks too big to be in the room, but it must only be about six feet tall. It's long, skinny limbs sticking out at odd angles make grinding sounds as they move. It reaches your bed finally and bends down, surprisingly smoothly compared to its previous movements. The beetles are still crawling under your skin. You can feel them swimming in your veins, pouring out of your mouth, so you're almost choking. You feel dizzy and sick. You must be asleep, but everything feels and looks so real. The stench of blood drenches the air you're struggling to inhale as the creature breathes into your face. It smiles hideously wide as if it has just found something it has been looking for, licking its teeth as it seems it has no lips or definition of where its mouth starts and its face ends. Its tongue is also black, shiny and dripping with thick, scarlet liquid you can only assume is where the horrible stench is coming from. With its talons, the monster reaches for your face, its sharp nails stopping as it lightly touches your face, sending shockwaves of intense pain into your whole body. You black out. The sun is shining brightly into your room as you open your stinging eyes. You come to the conclusion it must have been a nightmare. Of course you had. There's no such thing as monsters. You sit up, covered in sweat, as you breathe a sigh of relief. You turn towards your wardrobe as your heart skips a beat. Why is the wardrobe open?